Shila G is actually a uh, compound that's used in Ayurvedic medicine, but there's some really good research studies exploring the supplementation with Shila G at about 250 milligrams twice per day. And this has been looked at in males and in females. And it does seem to significantly increase two hormones. One is testosterone and the other is follicle stimulating hormone. And for that reason, Shila G is often considered a tonic that people use both as an aphrodisiac, uh, to increase libido, as well as to increase fertility. Now, For males, it's a little bit less of an issue because as I mentioned earlier, sperm are constantly being generated and the presence of FSH is going to increase spermatogenesis. Now, Shila G is not FSH itself. Shila G stimulates the release of FSH and it stimulates the release of testosterone. So again, there's no reason to think that it would shut down your endogenous testosterone or FSH production. Hey everybody, Shilajit has been making the rounds lately, especially in the wellness and biohacking space. It's being pitched as a natural testosterone booster, an energy enhancer, even a longevity tool. You'll see videos showing this dark resin being scooped from a jar with claims about ancient remedies and peak male vitality. But before jumping on the trend, it's worth asking, what actually is Shilajit? And more importantly, what does the research say about it? In this video, I want to unpack some of the claims, look at the science behind the more popular effects, and try to separate what's real from what's mostly marketing. Shilajit is a component of Ayurvedic medicine, utilized by holistic Indian practitioners and many supplement-interested biohackers alike. It's a blackish, brownish, highly viscous exudate derived from rocks within the Himalayan region, composed largely of fulvic acids and dibenzoalpha pyrones, which are thought to contribute to its cellular penetrative and physiological effects. It's thought to be generally safe and intertwined within different features of vitality and reproductive health. Andrew Huberman says there are some really good research studies, which is a quote, showing that Shilajit boosts FSH and testosterone, but I'm going to show you why that's not quite accurate. The study he's referring to is titled, Clinical Evaluation of Purified Shilajit on Testosterone Levels in Healthy Volunteers. Before we even get into the methods or results, let's look at the acknowledgement section, which in this case reads more like a conflict of interest disclosure. Why? Because the study was funded by Natrion Inc., a company that not only develops but also sells Shilajit under the brand name Primavi. So yes, the very people who profit from Shilajit also paid for the study. Now, I'm not saying we should toss the research in the trash just because it was industry funded, but when someone points to this as a really good study, that funding source absolutely raises a red flag. Financial incentive can bias outcomes, especially in supplement research. But now let's go through it a bit more. Ultimately, 75 healthy participants were enrolled and either given Shilajit 250 milligrams twice per day or a placebo for 90 days. The results suggest that Shilajit is responsible for increased testosterone levels in these subjects over the time frame, but the data show some inconsistencies. Compared to baseline, total testosterone levels in the Shilajit group rose at 30 days, returned near baseline at 60 days, and elevated again at 90 days. Free testosterone levels were lower at the 30 and 60 day mark, but spiked at 90 days as well. The placebo group, which had higher baseline testosterone, showed decreases in both free and total testosterone over this period. In this experimental treatment group, luteinizing hormone or LH levels slightly rose but were generally consistent, while follicle stimulating hormones, FSH levels, increased slightly throughout. These fluctuations suggest suggest that lifestyle factors and individual variability might play a significant role. Additionally, the higher baseline testosterone in the placebo group complicates the comparison and limits the ability to draw definitive conclusions about the efficacy of Shilajit. And notably, the researchers didn't tightly control for lifestyle factors, things like exercise and training, diet, sleep, all of which 
as we know well by now, influence testosterone levels. I will argue another point that Huberman makes, which is that because shilajit is not FSH itself and stimulates production of testosterone, there are no shutdown effects on your hormones, which just isn't true. If there is an acutely, unusually high amount of testosterone that's produced, this will negatively feed back on the hypothalamus and the pituitary. If you're driving on a quiet highway and suddenly a thousand cars enter at the next on-ramp, it doesn't matter whether those cars came from a detour, a concert, or a sale at Bath & Body Works, they're still going to flood the system and trigger traffic control measures. In the same way, if testosterone suddenly spikes even from a natural stimulator like Shilajit, the body will recognize that surge and dial back hormone production upstream. Even the researchers in this article say that negative feedback from elevated testosterone is likely playing a role in the measured results. Point being, take these claims with a grain of salt, or better yet, with a scoop of fulvic acid. And remember, just because it's written in research formatting doesn't mean it isn't also written by somebody cashing out on the headline. This study is full of confounders that make interpreting its results very complicated. Not to mention that the results themselves are painted as optimistic by the researchers who are funded by a company that sells the product in question. Calling this a really good research study is like Yelp giving a 5-star rating to a restaurant owned by Yelp's CEO. And I will add, Andrew Huberman has in the past endorsed a supplement company called Thorn, which of course sells this product too. I will add that most human studies report no major adverse effects over 90 days at doses like 250 or 500 milligrams per day. At the same time, it does seem to be something that's been tolerated for generations under Ayurvedic medicinal framework. However, it's crucial to note that Shilajit requires purification due to the presence of heavy metals, such as arsenic, lead, and mercury, which can pose significant health risks if consumed in excessive amounts. Studies have shown that commercial Shilajit products can contain these toxic metals, sometimes exceeding limits that we would consider permissible or acceptable. The detoxification mechanisms involving humic substances in Shilajit aren't fully understood and the safety of these products can vary depending on their source and their processing. There are several rodent studies showing some antioxidant or fertility benefits, but most use highly variable doses and rarely do these claims translate into human relevance. If you want other studies on the topic evaluated, I'm more than happy to, but I wanted to keep this video brief, but to dive deep into the growingly popular viral testosterone-boosting claims of Shilajit revolving around this one study, which has more holes than SpongeBob SquarePants. That said, I really want to thank you for your time. I appreciate your viewership. If you're looking for a way to further support the channel and request videos as you want, the link to the Patreon will be in the description below. Additionally, I did recently release a guide that's 20 pages long on BPC-157 and all the research supporting its use, its limitations, and really most of everything we have on the compound synthesized there for you. I'll leave that in the description below too. But thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy